buang akar uh, kepahitan. The, the theme that uh, today preaching is about to get rid of the root of the bitterness. Nah, saya percaya bahwa uh, banyak orang di dunia ini mengalami hidup dalam kepahitan. And I believe that a lot of people actually live in bitterness. Baik mereka sadari maupun mereka tidak sadari. Whether they realize it or not. Kalau kita lihat peperangan di dunia ini, if we see the war in the world, itu juga sebagai akibat daripada suatu akar kepahitan. It's also because of the root of bitterness. Uh, ada satu cerita seorang istri mungkin yang dia kaya, banyak uang. There's one story illustration sorry about a wife that is very rich. Waktu dia meninggal, when she passed away, dia menulis warisan untuk suaminya she wrote a will for his husband dia cuma, for husband. Dia cuma kasih satu dolar saudara she, she only gave one dollar to the husband dan satu dolar itu boleh diinvest and she said that you can invest the one dollar nah interestnya baru dikasih ke suaminya and then the interest can give to the husband ini saking karena kepahitannya istrinya kepada suaminya because the wife has a lot of bitterness for the for the husband ya yeah. jadi Uh, kadang-kadang dalam suami istri juga ada hal-hal terjadi yang membuat kita bisa merasa suatu kepahitan. Sometimes in the family husband and wife can also have bitterness. Nah, ini uh, ilustrasi di uh, di suatu museum di namanya Madame Tussaud. Pada okay. tahu? In illustration there's museum Madame Tussaud. Orang yang paling disukai itu adalah uh, Winston Churchill. The figure that is It's like by everybody is Winston Churchill. Kemudian yang kedua Yesus Kristus. And second is Jesus Christ. Yang ketiga John Kennedy. And the third is John Kennedy. Nah, figure yang paling dibenci. And the figure that people most hated. Yang pertama Hitler. It's number one Hitler. Yang kedua Mao Zedong. And then number two uh, Mao Zedong from China. Yang ketiga saya nggak tahu namanya Enoch Power. The third is Enoch Power. Yang keempat Presiden Nixon. Number four is Nixon, President Nixon. Yang kelima Dracula. And number five is Dracula. Yang paling dibenci. Saya nggak tahu apa. Uh, kita akan baca bersama-sama dari ayat ini Ibrani 12 ayat satu yang bahasa Indonesia dulu ya. Kita baca bersama-sama satu dua tiga. Karena kita mempunyai Ayo kita ayat kencang sama-sama Satu, dua, tiga Karena Amin Hebrew 12 verse 1 Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great plot of witnesses Let us throw off everything that hinders us And the sin that so easily entangles And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Saya ambil ayat dari kitab Ibrani pasal 12. I took from the word from the Hebrew chapter 12. Karena kitab Ibrani 12 ini adalah suatu motivasi kepada kita. Because from this chapter there is a motivation for all of us. Untuk menekuni kehidupan kekristenan. To persevere in the Christian Christian life. Nah, berarti kan di sini dikatakan ada satu perlombaan. It says here that there is a race. Tapi di dalam di dalam konteks ini perlombaan ini bukan untuk berkompetisi. But in the context of this chapter, it is not the competition, the race for a competition. Bukan satu harus lebih daripada yang lain. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, become better from other people. Tapi suatu ajakan untuk berlari bersama-sama. But it's an invitation to run together. Yang kedua adalah suatu ajakan untuk meninggalkan beban. Is second is invitation to leave the burden. Katakan beban. Burden. Saudara mau meninggalkan beban? You want to leave your burden? Seringkali beban itu menghalangi kita. The burden sometimes hinders us. Dan yang ketiga, and the third thing, Ibrani pasal 12 ini ada kelanjutan dari Ibrani pasal 11. This Hebrew 12 is actually continuation of Hebrew 11. Di mana di Ibrani pasal 11 itu dinyatakan banyak pahlawan-pahlawan iman. Because in Hebrew 11 it says about a lot of the Heroes of the Bible. Jadi pengarang dari kitab Ibrani ini ingin mengatakan. So the author of the book of Hebrew was trying to say. Kita tidak ada alasan untuk merasa lemah. We do not have the reason to feel weak. Kita harus berlari terus. We have to still go running. Kita harus maju terus. We still have to go forward. Apapun yang terjadi. Whatever happened. Amin. Amin. 
Ini ada satu uh, cerita atau suatu tokoh olahraga. This is uh, the picture of one of the um, sportsmen bernama Eric Lidl. His name is Eric Riddle. Do you ever heard about him? Ada ya mungkin ya. Dia ini uh, hid hidup uh, lahir sekitar tahun 1900. He was born around 1900. Dan dia terkenal karena dia seorang pemenang di perlombaan Olimpik. He was famous because he was the winner of the Olympic champion. Dia seorang pelari 100 dan 400 meter. He was the runner of 100 uh, meter as well as 400. Dia seorang pemain rugby juga. He was also a rugby player. Dan yang paling terkenal karena dia seorang misionaris. And so uh, most famous because he is a missionary as Dia well. anak seorang pendeta. He is the son of a uh, of a pastor. Pada tahun 1924, in 1924, di suatu perlombaan Olimpik, in one of the Olympic championship, Eric Lidl, Eric, Eric Lidl uh, menyatakan bahwa dia tidak mau bertanding. In, uh, he said in one of the Olympic that he does he doesn't want to compete. Di pertandingan 100 meter, in the 100 meter uh, race. Karena pertandingan 100 meternya kebetulan jatuh hari Minggu. Because the the race was at, somehow happened on Sunday. Dia percaya hari Minggu itu harinya Tuhan. Because he believed that the Sunday is the whole Sabbath day. Berapanya hari Minggu harinya Tuhan? How many of us believe that that's why you are Sabbath day? here? I believe because that's why you're here. Dan hari berikutnya dia ikut perlombaannya di 400 meter. So the next day he um, he run the 400 meters. Dan dia memenangkan pertandingan itu and he won the championship. Dan bukan hanya itu dia mau menyakat world record. And also he broke the record, the world record. Dan selama 12 tahun berikutnya, and for the next 12 years, tidak ada yang bisa memecahkan rekornya dia. No one can break can break his record. Tuhan memberikan suatu penghargaan kepada dia. So God gave him like a reward. Karena dia benar-benar menyatakan imannya kepada dunia. Because he proclaimed his faith to the world. Sesudah itu dia so, uh, dia memutuskan untuk menjadi misionaris di China. After that, he decided to become missionary in China. Jadi dia meninggalkan so uh, pertandingan olahraga. All the sports and everything and went to China. Dan dia memilih untuk menginjil di China. And he chose to be uh, to preach the gospel in China. Uh, kehidupan Eric Liddell ini dibuatkan suatu movie atau film. His Life story is actually was made as a movie. Sekitar tahun 1980-an. It's around 18, uh, 1980. Saya lupa namanya apa. I forgot the name of the Tapi movie. Tapi bisa search nanti kalau mau nonton. Eric Liddell menunjuk, menunjukkan suatu contoh bahwa dia seorang olahragawan. Eric Liddell actually gave an example even though he's a sportsman. Tapi dia memilih bertanding dalam iman. But he chose to race in faith. Kita Ibrani ini mengajak kita untuk bertanding dalam iman kita. The same like uh, Hebrew chapter 12 is ask us to join the race of faith. Dan saya mengajak kita semuanya ikut bertanding dalam iman ini. And we all, I also invite all of us to join also in the uh, race of faith. Nah, mengapa saya bawakan Ibrani uh, pasal 12 ini? Why I need to bring the uh, Hebrew chapter 12? Karena di Ibrani 12 ayat 15. Because in Hebrew chapter 12 verse 15. Pengarang ini menyatakan suatu hal yang harus kita perhatikan. The author of the book of Hebrews say something very important. Di sini dikatakan jagalah supaya jangan ada seorang pun katakan seorang pun see that no one menjauhkan diri dari kasih karunia Allah fall short of the grace of God agar jangan tumbuh akar yang pahit that no bitter root yang menimbulkan kerusuhan grows up to cause trouble dan yang mencemarkan banyak Orang. And defile many. So, ayat ini sangat uh, penting. This is a very important verse. Karena banyak orang Kristen tidak bisa berlomba dengan baik. Because a lot of Christian cannot join a good race. Karena ada suatu akar kepahitan dalam hidupnya. Because they have the root of bitterness in their in their heart. Nah, akar kepahitan ini seperti beban. The root of bitterness is like a burden to you. Saudara so, pernah lihat seorang pelari Olimpik waktu dia bertanding dia bawa karung di belakang. Have you ever seen an Olympic runner but he bring like a, a, a sack uh, of burden in his back? Dia bawa karung beras yang 50 pound. Maybe he bring like 50 pounds of rice for example. Terus dia bertanding lari. Then he run. 
Kira-kira dia bisa menang gak? Do you think he will win? Gak bisa saudara. No, I don't think so. Meskipun dia kuat, tapi even, pasti dia kalah. Even though he was strong, he would lose. Demikian juga banyak orang Kristen mau berlomba, tapi dia bawa karung di belakangnya. The same thing. A lot of Christian want to join the race, but they still carry their burden. Makanya berat. That's why it's so heavy. Gak bisa lari. They couldn't run. Suka terjatuh. And they fall many times. Karena itu penting kita mengerti hal ini. That's why it's very important for us to understand. Sekali lagi saya ingin berikan ada beberapa ciri orang yang mengalami kepahitan. I want to give you some uh, hints or or that people are in bitterness. Tapi sudah jangan tujuh tujuh. But you don't don't uh, point other people. Oh, so if you see oh, the symptoms, ini. if you see the symptoms, don't point to other people. Yang pertama, the first symptom. Biasanya orang kepahitan tuh orang yang gampang naik darah. Those that have bitterness in their life, they easily get angry. Gampang marah. They easily get angry. Gak bisa kontrol emosi. They cannot control themselves. Yang kedua, orang yang kepahitan biasanya mudah tersinggung. And also the second symptom for those that have bitterness in their life, they easily suka get offended. Menarik diri dari pergaulan. And they like to withdraw themselves from the community. Yang ketiga, orang yang kepahitan. And also the third symptom. Kata-katanya kasar, ya. And usually they are rough in their speech. Kadang-kadang kebun binatang keluar. Sometimes they are they cursing and kalau nyetir suka maki-maki orang. And when they're driving, they uh, like to curse. Ada ya di sini ya. I hope there's none like that in this church. Orang kepahitan juga orang yang gampang menghakimi. Those that have bitterness also those that like to judge other people. Uh, secara tidak sengaja. Sering uh, lebih mudah menghakimi dia. Unpurposely, the person is easy to judge bukan, other people. Mungkin bukan maksud dia untuk Maybe menghalang. Maybe it was uh, not his intention. Untuk mengalami hal itu. Yang kelima, the fifth symptom. Orang yang kepahitan biasanya berusaha menutupi kelemahan. Those that have bitterness usually they try to hide themselves, their weaknesses. Dengan jaim. They uh, as try to look good. Jaga image. They try to... Uh, protect their image Sarangan semuanya baik-baik aja. They want to show that they are okay. Terus yang keenam, orang kepahitan cenderung sixth. untuk mengatur. And the sixth is uh, those that have bitterness, they try to uh, control dan mendominasi. And try to dominate other people. Dia merasa dirinya paling benar. He felt that He is the most right person. Kali lagi gak ada kan di tempat ini. The most rightful person. Semuanya baik-baik semua. I believe that not none. Orang yang kepahitan suka menjadi pengamat. And also those that have bitterness, they like to become um, analyzer of Dan things. Suka kadang-kadang cari kesalahan orang lain. Like to see other people's fault. Kita kita nggak nggak melihat dan memfokuskan kepada karakteristik ini. We don't want to focus on this character. Tapi kita mau mengenali apa yang terjadi dalam kehidupan kita. But we want to Understand. Karena saya pribadi juga ada hal-hal seperti itu. Because in my life myself I also have those things. Nah, yang paling penting hari ini adalah mengenal apa akarnya. What we need to understand today is is very important is to understand the root. Akar adalah bagian dari pohon. The root is the part of the tree. Yang masuk ke tanah that goes inside the the, the soil untuk menguatkan dan mengalirkan air to reach to the water and also to strengthen the tree ke seluruh bagian dari pohon tersebut and to bring all the nutrition to all over the, the trees the branches kalau kira-kira akarnya pahit if the fruit is bitter kira-kira buahnya manis atau pahit do you think the fruit will be sweet or bitter too saudara menangkap maksud saya enggak you understand what i'm trying to say right kalau akarnya pahit if the root is bitter buahnya bisa manis enggak do you think the fruit can be sweet Saya pernah bilang beberapa minggu yang lalu. I have I've said couple weeks ago. Karena saya ada kelas di because, saya mengambil sekolah. Because I'm taking some last uh, some seminary classes. Ya, salah satu kelas mengharuskan saya ikut suatu counseling. And one of the classes asked me to go to counseling. Dan counselor itu uh, menggambarkan kepada saya suatu pohon. And the counselor draw me a tree. Dan dia menggambarkan apa yang terjadi dalam kehidupan saya? And she drew me what's happening in my life. Ada akar-akar yang harus dibersihkan. There are some root that need needed to be cleaned. Mungkin kepahitan di masa lalu, maybe uh, bitterness in the past. Kepahitan di masa kecil, bitterness when I was a kid. 
ada satu uh, uh, suatu hal-hal uh, yang harus di, dibersihkan. There are things that need to be cleansed in my life. Nah, di Matius pasal 3 ayat 10 berkata, in Matthew chapter 3 verse 10, kapak sudah tersedia that the axe has already been prepared pada akar pohon to the root of the tree. Dan setiap pohonnya tidak menghasilkan buah and for those three that does not bear fruits pasti I'm sorry, tidak menghasilkan buah yang baik that didn't uh, bear the, the good fruit pasti ditebang it definitely it will be cut off dan dibuang ke dalam api and also will throw in the fire. Jadi Tuhan ingin supaya setiap Pohon itu berbuah. So God wants every tree to bear good fruit. Tuhan mau kehidupan kita berbuah. God wants our life to be fruitful. Ada amin. Amin. Nah, namun kita harus potong itu akar-akar yang tidak baik. But we need to cut those root that is bitter. Kita bersihkan akar-akar yang have to cleanse yang pahit. Those bitter roots. Ini saya ambil dari satu uh, pengajaran. I took this from a teaching. Dia bernama Emotional Healthy Church. It's called Emotional Healthy Church. This picture in this. Bahwa kebanyakan apa yang dilihat manusia di permukaan itu seperti seperti gunung es. It's actually what people see in the outer of a human is actually just like this picture. Kalau saya sudah perhatikan yang di permukaan itu hanya kecil. Those that's above the surface of the water is actually very small. Tapi yang di bawah yang nggak kelihatan. But under besar. the water is actually very big ice. Makanya kapal Titanic tenggelam. That's why the Titanic uh, uh, was was sinking. It was sinking. Karena dia pikir gunung esnya kecil. Because he thought that it is only a small uh, iceberg. Dia nggak mau memperlambat jalannya. So the, the the ship was still moving forward. Diterjang terus. And it actually crashes. Gak taunya bawahnya gede. Actually, the bottom part is the is a large iceberg. Kapalnya langsung sobek. So the 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 ship was um, tossing. Yeah, sinking. Dan tenggelam akhirnya. Demikian juga kehidupan kita. It's the same thing with our life. Kalau kita nggak bereskan hal-hal seperti ini, if we don't uh, take care of the things that is within inside, kadang-kadang kita bisa tenggelam. We can sink as well. Dalam kehidupan. In our life. Kita bisa menabrak gunung es. We can hit the iceberg. Karena itu harus di That's bereskan. Why. We need to take care of it. Seringkali kepahitan ini bukan kesalahan saudara. And most of the time, this bitterness is not because of you, because of you. Ada mungkin karena di masa kecil. Uh, it's maybe because when you were a kid. Ada penolakan. There was a rejection. Kita sempat didiskusi di uh, email minggu lalu. Uh, we had a discussion in the email last week. Bahwa saya katakan kadang-kadang selagi masa bayi, uh, when for example someone is being pregnant or baby is in in in, in pregnancy stage, bayi itu bisa merasakan penolakan. The baby can feel the rejection. Dia tahu orang tuanya mau atau enggak. She knows whether his parents love him or her or not. Kalau bayi ini mengalami penolakan, if the baby feel the rejection pada waktu dia lahir, when he, she was born dan dia besar and she grew, dia akan menjadi anak yang sangat nakal. And then she be, she will become um, an, a person that's rebellious. Yeah, rebellious. Uh, suka berontak. Yeah, she, she likes to rebel. Yeah. Bukan salah saudara. It is not because of your fault. Tapi mungkin apa yang terjadi di masa lalu? Maybe because of what happened in the past. Itu dibawa sampai hari ini. So and you bring it until today. Saya baca sedikit tentang kehidupan Hitler. I also read a, a life of Hitler. Hitler ini sebetulnya tadinya orang baik. Actually Hitler was a good person. Dan sebetulnya orang Kristen. He was actually a Christian too. Dia pengagumnya Martin Luther. He was an admirer of the Martin Luther. Tapi masa kecilnya banyak mengalami kepahitan. But when he was a kid, he, he uh, went through a lot of bitterness. Dia bertengkar life. terus dengan bapaknya. He always he always uh, he fight with his dad. Kemudian waktu sekolah dia gagal. When he was in school, he didn't succeed. Dia akhirnya mau cari kerja nggak dapat. He wanted to get a job but he couldn't. Jadi dia masih muda akhirnya jadi gelandangan. So when he was a boy, he's actually become a beggar. 
Uh, setiap hari dia baca koran di Jerman di Austria itu. And every day he read the newspaper in the, on the street. Masa itu terjadi banyak diskriminasi. And at that time there was a lot of discrimination. Karena orang Yahudi yang tinggal di Austria itu. Because a lot of Jew who, who lived in Austria, in Austria. Adalah orang-orang yang sukses. Uh, those Jews are very successful. Dan mereka benci sama orang Yahudi. And so the the German is actually hated the the Jews of the. Jadi bangsa Austria mengalami satu kepahitan juga. So the Aust Austria people actually also had bitterness. Karena itu uh, anak muda Hitler ini. That's why this young Hitler. Suatu hari dia join army. One day he joined the army. Kemudian karena dia mungkin memang berbakat di situ. And because he was talented. Dia naik ranking terus. So he went up the rank very quickly. Sehingga dalam waktu singkat dia akhirnya menjadi pemimpin. And within a very short period of time he became um, the the high rank. Tapi karena kepahitannya tidak diselesaikan. And because his bitterness was not resolved. Dia pakai kedudukan itu. He used his position untuk membalas dendam. To take his revenge. Sudah lihat betapa bahayanya kepahitan. You see how dangerous is bitterness. Kadang-kadang kita tidak sadar. Most of the time we don't realize it. Ada akar kepahitan dalam hidup kita. That we have a root of bitterness in our life. Ada dua bersaudara di dalam gambar ini. If you see in this picture, there are two brothers. Saudara kan kau kira-kira sebelah kiri ini. You know who is on the left hand side? This is about what? Hah? Yang suka baca Alkitab coba. It's about. Saya bilang Ayah Abel. Yeah, you're right. Who said it's Cain and Abel in the book of Genesis? Di kejadian pasal keempat. In the book of Genesis chapter four, ini adalah pembunuhan yang pertama di sejarah manusia. This is the first murder that have ever happened in human history. Dan terjadi di dalam satu keluarga. And it happened in a family. Karena apa? Why? Ya cuma ada satu keluarga waktu itu. Because at that time it's only one family. Dan terjadi kepahitan. And the, it was started because of bitterness. Siapa yang masa pahit? Who was bitter? Cain. Cain, kakaknya. Karena dia mau persembahkan sesuatu kepada Tuhan. Because he offered something to God. Tapi tidak diterima sama Tuhan. But God didn't accept it. Kemudian adiknya persembahan sesuatu kepada Tuhan. But when Abel offer an next sacrifice, Tuhan terima. God accept the his. Karena itu dia marah. That's why he got angry. Ada perasaan diri hati. And he felt um, um, jealousy. jealousy. Kok adikku diterima aku enggak? How could my brother sacrifice God accepted it? But Banyak di dalam keluarga mind. mengalami suatu masalah. In a family there's a lot of uh, bitterness as well. Karena ada iri hati. Because of jealousy. Yang kamar sebelah kanan kira-kira apa? If you see on the picture on the right, what do you see? What event was this? Saya saya enggak ada hadiah coklat atau apa ya. I don't have a present if those that and uh, answer correct. Ini perjanjian baru. I don't have chocolate bar but saya kasih hint. This is yang sebelah kanan ini barusan berfoya-foya. So this is about the 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 prodigal son. Prodigal son. Right. Kali enggak ada hadiah. Eh so but ini tentang anak ini hilang. But the prodigal son. Seringkali kita fokusnya kepada anak yang hilang. Most of the time we focus on the prodigal son. Pernah tak anda berfikir tentang saudaranya anak yang hilang? Have you ever thought about the other brother on the left hand side? Alkitab selalu memberikan dua saudara dua saudara kebanyakan ini. Bible always illustrate with two brothers. Dan yang problem kadang-kadang yang sebanyak itu. And usually the one that has the problem usually the elder one. Apa masalahnya mereka? What is his problem? What is their problem? Masalahnya apa kira-kira? What is their problem? He stayed with his father his whole life and did everything right, and he was upset that his brother who did everything wrong was welcome back and had a party by his father, and he never got over his emotions. Do you know that? The older brother never really got over the emotions. Got over the emotion. Okay, good job. Betul memang apa yang dikatakan dia? It was right, but this region I say. But behind, di balik semuanya itu sebenarnya tentang apa? But behind, over behind this event, what do you think? Other things? 
Father God will always have his arms open for the unrighteous. Not necessarily the righteous and holy like we are here, but for the prostitutes and the drug addicts and the homeless that really need to come into his arms and come yeah. to the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. Yeni guru jadi saya suka. Sister Regina is a teacher, that's why when she explains, she she knows things. Uh, let me get to my point. Uh, point saya di sini adalah my point here. Problem utama daripada keluarga ini adalah the main problem of his this brother. Wa ri. It's about warisan. It's about inheritance. Kenapa? Karena si bungsu udah minta duitnya because his younger brother already taken his part. Kemudian dia pergi foya-foya and then he wasted all the money, all the funds. Kemudian dia balik lagi and then he came back. Menurut yang sulung and according to the older one, kamu udah dapat bagian, you have already taken your part. Jangan balik sini lagi, don't come back. Ini semua milikku. This is all mine. Tapi waktu dia diterima oleh bapaknya, but when the father accepted the younger one, dia pesta and even make him a party dan yang dia bilang dia benar karena perhatian bapaknya juga and also what sister Regina was said was right which is because the intention of the father kakak sulungnya marah so the older brother got angry nah, so, saya percaya ada kepahitan dong and I believe there is bitterness in his life Yakubus pasal 4 berkata James chapter 4 dari mana datangnya sengketa dan pertengkaran where comes the um, the contentions Bukannya datang dari hawa nafsu yang saling berjuang dalam tubuhmu. Isn't it come from the lust that is within your heart? Kamu mengingini sesuatu, you want something, tapi tidak memperolehnya. But you didn't get it. Lalu kamu membunuh, so you start to murder. Kamu iri hati, and you start being jealous. Tetapi kamu tidak mencapai tujuanmu. But you didn't get anything. Lalu kamu berdekat dan berkelahi. And then you have intention and you get quarrel one to another. Kamu tidak memperoleh apa-apa. You didn't get anything. Karena kamu tidak berdoa. Because you didn't pray. Jadi ini bukan suatu hal yang baru. So this is not a new thing. Banyak orang mengalami kepahitan. A lot of people that have bitterness in their heart. Tapi saya mau masuk dalam satu uh, paradigma yang lebih dalam di sini. But I want to come to a different paradigm even further. Kita mau melihat su su suatu penderitaan seorang bernama Ayub. And we want to see the suffering of Job. Kita lihat perkataan Ayub di sini. We want to see uh, Job chapter 10. Aku telah bosan hidup. It says that I am no longer want to live. Artinya apa? What does it mean? Dia udah putus asa. It's mean that he has no more hope. Dia udah mau bunuh diri. He wanted to kill himself. Dikatakan aku hendak melampiaskan keluhanku. I did say that I want to uh, to give out my complaints. I want to tell my complaints. Aku hendak berbicara dalam kepahitan jiwa. And I want to speak in the bitterness of my soul. Wow. Ayub mengaku bahwa dia ini kepahitan. So job is actually um, uh, confess that he has bitterness. Tapi saya mau tanya so Siapa yang menyebabkan penderitaan Ayub? But I want to ask you a question. Who made him bitter? Siapa yang jawab iblis? God. How many of us uh, answer with the devil? The devil. Siapa yang bilang Tuhan? How many of you say God? <laughs> Siapa yang gak berani jawab? How many didn't have the guts to <laughs> say Tuhan kalau jawab salah? How many of you don't have the guts to say devil or God? Memang yang melakukan itu iblis, tapi dia diizinkan oleh Tuhan. That's true. That the devil do the action, but it was a permission by God. Nah, ini agak susah, saudara. Nah, this is something that is not easy to be understood. Tuhan mengizinkan terjadi God let it happen. suatu penderitaan. Mengapa saya bawa uh, tentang Ayub ini? Why I want to bring out about the Job's life? Karena saya percaya Tuhan itu berkuasa di atas segala-galanya. Because I believe that God has the power over every, anything. Setiap adanya kita alami, all all the circumstances that we are facing, enak atau tidak enak, whether it's good or bad, itu dijinkan sama Tuhan. It was all permission by God. Jangan kita cepat-cepat ngomel. 
don't uh, uh, easy to complain. Yang kita cari adalah kehendak Tuhan. What we look in is the will of God. Ayub meskipun menderita tapi dia mencari kehendak Job even though Tuhan. he was in suffering but he was looking for God's will. Dia sempat mengalami kepahitan. He had the bitterness. Tapi pada akhir daripada buku Ayub itu. But at the end of the book of Job, kita melihat kemenangan yang luar biasa. We saw the victory in his life. Tuhan lepaskan dia dari segala kepahitan. Because God released him from all the bitterness. Tuhan berkati dia dua kali. God bless him even multi multiply his wealth. Karena dia lulus dari ujian yang Because dia he passed the exam hadapi. that he faced. Nah, saya ingin di, uh, saya ingin memberikan beberapa kunci untuk kita keluar dari akar kepahitan ini. I want to give several keys so that we can come out of the bitterness. Tapi sekali lagi itu semua tergantung kita pribadi. But it's all depend on us entirely. Ya, kita yang bisa melepaskan diri kita dari kepahitan. Whether we can release or not is all up to us. Tanpa adanya satu kerinduan untuk dilepaskan, without the desire that you want to get out of it. Akan susah untuk kita lepas dari It's akar going kepahitan. It's going to be hard to release this bitterness. Nah, mungkin tidak semua kita mengalami akar kepahitan. Maybe not many, maybe not all of us have have bit, the root of bitterness. Tapi kalau ada, saya ajak kita untuk mengikuti. But uh, if you are the person, I want I invite you to follow. Mengikuti instruksi ini. To follow this instruction. Karena saya percaya akan membantu kita. Because I believe it will help us. Yang pertama kunci pertama untuk keluar dari kepahitan adalah kita harus merendahkan hati. The first key to get out the bitterness, first thing you have to humble ourselves before God. Mari kita katakan sama-sama merendahkan hati. Let us say humble ourselves before God. Amsal 3:34 berkata, What does that exactly mean? Humble. When you say humble, what is humble? What does humble mean? Yeah, I will go through this. Bear with me. Amsal 3:34 berkata orang yang rendah hati dikasihaninya. In the book of Proverbs verse 3 it says that those who are humble in heart God loves. Pada zaman dahulu 200 tahun yang lalu, uh, 200 years ago, ada seorang hamba Tuhan bernama Pastor Peter Miller. There is one pastor called uh, Peter Miller. Dia punya gereja di Philadelphia. He had a church in Philadelphia. Dan di dekat gerejanya itu ada and close to his church. Seseorang yang sangat membenci dia. There's someone that really really hate him. Orang hate him. ini selalu mau menjatuhkan dia. This person always want to bring him down. Dia seorang ateis. He is an atheist. Jadi dia selalu mencari gara-gara dengan Peter so this person always bring trouble to Peter Miller. Dan orang ini bukan hanya troublemaker, orang yang buat gara-gara. And this person is not only the troublemaker, tapi ternyata dia seorang pengkhianat juga. But also he he was a traitor. Dia berkhianat kepada negara Amerika. He traitor with the US, uh, United States. Suatu hari orang ini tertangkap. One day his this person was captured oleh Jenderal Washington by the uh, General Washington. Kemudian orang ini akan dihukum mati. And this person wanted to be um, sentenced to life or to put to death. Pada waktu Pastor Peter mendengar bahwa orang ini akan dihukum mati, when Pastor Peter heard about this person um, about to put to death, dia cepat-cepat berjalan mencari General Washington. He went quickly and to look for General Washington. Ingat dua ratus tahun lalu ada mobil. Remember, 200 years ago there was no car. Dia berjalan sejauh 60 miles. So he walked around 60 miles. Hanya untuk ketemu General Washington, just to meet to meet the uh, General Washington. Terus dia bilang kepada General Washington, and he said to General Washington, "Tolong bebaskan orang itu. Please free the per that person." Terus General Washington tidak bisa. And say no, cannot. Dia pengkhianat because he was a traitor. Harus hukum mati. He must put to death. Terus Washington tanya kepada Peter Miller. And then General Washington asked him, "Dia ini siapanya kamu? Who is he to you, Peter? Dia teman baik kamu apa? Is he your best friend?" Terus pastornya bilang, "Teman baik." Then the, the pastor said, "Good friend." Bukan. Dia no. musuh terbesar saya. He was my worst enemy. Terus 
General Washington bingung. So the General Washington was was perplexed. Oh ya, musuh terbesar kamu. He was your worst enemy. Wah kalau gitu saya harus pikirkan lagi putusan ini. Then I have to think twice. Karena ada orang yang mau berjalan 60 mile hanya untuk membela musuhnya. Because there is a person that want to walk 60 miles just to free his worst enemy. Akhirnya setelah argumentasi, finally after the argument, Washington memberikan amnesti. George, General Washington gave an amnesty to the person. Dia berikan surat itu kepada Pastor Peter, and that the letter he gave to Pastor Peter, dan Pastor Peter harus berjalan lagi lima belas mile, and Pastor Peter have to walk another fifty miles. Di mana orang ini akan digantung? Where that person want to be hanged? Pada waktu dia sudah sampai dekat, when he got close to the, dia dia harus lakukan ini satu hari semuanya, karena kalau enggak sudah mati orang ini. So remember, he has to do this in one day because otherwise it will be too late. Jadi pada waktu dia dekat, so when he got close, musuhnya lihat dia, and his Enemy saw him. Musuhnya bilang gini. And his enemy said, "Lihat ini sekarang musuhku akan ketawa. Look, this time my enemy will laugh at me. Karena saya akan dibantu mati. Because I will be hanged to death. Tapi Pastor Miller tidak banyak bicara. But Pastor Miller didn't say anything. Cuma kasih surat. And gave the letter to the guard. And then this person was free. Kita melihat suatu kehidupan. Seorang hamba Tuhan yang rendah hati. We see that a life of a servant of the Lord that is humble. Meskipun dia mau dihancurkan hidupnya, even though he want his life wanted to be destroyed by that person, tapi dia tidak membalas dengan bencana. But he didn't do his revenge. Dia membalasnya dengan kebaikan. He revenged the person with goodness. Kita belajar kalau kita mau dilepaskan dari akar kepahitan. We have to learn if we want to be free from bitterness. Kita harus merendahkan hati terlebih dahulu. We have to humble ourselves before the Lord. Tidak ada cara lain. There's no other way. Tanpa merendahkan hati, without humbling your heart, tidak akan terjadi apa-apa. Till nothing can happen. Amsal 16 18 berkata, the the book of Proverbs 16 verse 6, verse 18, verse 18. Kecongkakan the the proud of the heart mendahului kehancur it it will be followed by destruction dan tinggi hati and the proud of the heart mendahului kejatuhan it will follow with fall kadang-kadang memang nggak mudah it's not easy untuk merendahkan hati to humble ourselves tapi ini satu kunci but this is the key kalau kita mau dilepaskan, if we want to be free dari akar kepahitan, from this root of bitterness, this is the key. Kita kembali melihat sikap Ayub. Let's see also back again to the Job's attitude. Pada waktu Ayub menerima segala bencana dalam kehidupannya, when Job is experiencing all the problems and also all the disaster in his life, dia tidak marah-marah kepada Tuhan. He didn't He he didn't angry with God. Tapi dia katakan begini. But this is what he said. Dengan telanjang aku keluar dari kandungan ibuku. Job one twenty one. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Dengan telanjang juga aku akan kembali ke dalam. And naked will I depart. Tuhan yang memberi. The Lord gave. Tuhan yang mengambil. The Lord has taken away. Terpujilah nama Tuhan. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amin. Amin. Kalau dalam kehidupan kita tidak ada yang harus dipertahankan. If in our life there is nothing for us that we want to hold dear, sorry. Kalau kita merasa tidak punya apa-apa, if we feel that we have nothing in this life, sebetulnya tidak ada yang harus dipertahankan. There's nothing that you need to hold on to it. Ayub ini kaya orang kaya, but Job is actually very very rich. Success. He was a successful person. He had a big family. Anak tujuh orang. He had seven sons. Kemudian bencana terjadi. And the destruction came. Rumahnya habis. His house was burned down. Bisnisnya hancur. And his business was down. Anak-anaknya mati. All his sons were dead. Tapi dia bisa berkata. But he could say, Aku keluar dari rahim ibuku telanjang. Naked came. 
from my mother's womb. Jadi aku kembali lagi telanjang. And I naked I will depart. Aku enggak bawa apa-apa. I will not bring anything. Wow, ini luar biasa. This is something that is so great. Karena dia tidak kepahitan. Because he was not bitter in his heart. Dia kehilangan banyak hal tapi dia tidak kepahitan. Even though he lost a lot all things but he didn't have bitterness. Karena dia merasa itu bukan punyanya dia. Because he felt that this all these things was not his. Kalau tidak ada yang perlu dipertahankan berarti sebenarnya kita tidak perlu marah. If we don't have things to hold on to that you want to always hold dear, there's nothing to lose. Kadang-kadang kita marah karena terlalu mempertahankan sesuatu. Sometimes we are angry because we want to hold on to things dear in our heart. Kita jengkel sekali sama seseorang karena kita we, kehilangan sesuatu. We become very angry with other person because we lost something that belongs to us. Mungkin kita kehilangan harga diri kita. Maybe we felt that uh, we lost our pride. Karena dikata-katain. Maybe somebody spoke about that thing about us. Atau posisi kita diambil. Maybe our position was taken away by someone. Atau warisannya tadi seperti tadi diambil. Maybe just like the example our inheritance was taken away by other, other people. Atau waktu kita diambil, maybe our time was taken away from. Jadi marah. So we got angry. Tapi kalau kita merasa nggak punya apa-apa, but if we feel that we have nothing, karena semuanya dari Tuhan, because everything comes from God, tidak ada yang perlu dipertahankan. There's nothing to hold dear. Semuanya kembali kepada Tuhan. Everything will come back to God. Jadi apa yang perlu dimarahkan? So there's nothing to be angry about. Memang secara realitas tidak semudah itu. Maybe in, I mean it's true in reality. It is not that simple. Tapi kalau kita bisa memiliki sikap seperti Ayub, but if we have this attitude just like Job, kita menjadi orang yang luar biasa. We can be an amazing person. Saya baca uh, buku yang disusun oleh orang yang bernama Thomas Kempis. I read a book wrote by Thomas Kempis sekitar beberapa abad yang lalu. It was about a uh, couple centuries ago. Saudara so, mungkin tidak tahu nama ini. Maybe you never heard about him. Tapi kalau saudara Google, but if you Google his name, ini buku paling laris setelah Alkitab. This is the book that is the most uh, is is the best seller of all time as well after the Bible. Nah, nah main-main saudara. Alkitab itu buku yang ada yang lain. Bible is number one best seller, of course. Book. Karena jumlah orang percaya di dunia ini tu dua billion. Because there are two billion people who believe. Dan setiap orang biasanya punya satu Alkitab. And usually one, each person will have one Bible. Tapi ini buku nomor dua. But this is number two yang paling laku after the Bible. Sepanjang sejarah loh ya. This is across the history. Setelah Alkitab. Dan kalau saya baca buku itu, and if I read this book, dia benar-benar orang yang sangat rendah hati. And I, as I see that this person is very very humble person. Dia berikan semuanya kepada Tuhan. He gave everything to the Lord. Ayu belajar untuk menjadi orang yang rendah hati. Job learn to be a humble person. Kita mesti belajar menjadi orang yang we must learn to be humble. Rendah hati. Yang kedua, the second thing, kunci yang kedua, the second key, kita harus meminta pengampunan. We have to ask for forgiveness. Atas dosa-dosa di masa lalu. For the past sins. Tuhan kita, our God, ada Tuhan yang mengampuni. Is the God that forgives. Kita jangan takut untuk minta ampun. Never feel afraid to come to God and ask for forgiveness. Minggu lalu sudah dinyatakan bahwa kalau kita minta ampun dan datang kepada Tuhan. Last week it was spoken that if you if you Ask for forgiveness from God. Dia akan mengampuni kita. He will forgive you. Dikatakan sebab inilah darahku. It says that because this is my blood. Darah perjanjian. It is a blood of New Testament. Yang ditumpangkan bagi banyak orang. That has been poured to many people. Untuk pengampunan dosa. For for forgiveness of sin. Hanya darah Kristus. It's only the blood of Jesus. Yang dapat membebaskan kita. That can free us. Amen. Amen. Tidak ada yang lain. There's not not nothing else. Pengampunan dari darah Yesus. The forgiveness by the blood of Jesus Christ. Akan membersihkan segala kepahitan dari kita. It will cleanse our all our bitterness. Baik itu kepahitan dari diri kita pribadi. Whether it's the bitterness from our life. Atau mungkin dari orang tua kita. Maybe it comes from your parents. Atau dari orang lain. Maybe from other people. Atau bahkan mungkin apa yang diizinkan oleh Tuhan dalam hidup kita. Maybe things that God has 
permission it to happen in your life. Kita harus singkirkan. We have to get get rid of it. Melalui pengampunan atas With the forgiveness of sin. Minta ampun kepada Tuhan. Ask for forgiveness. Tanpa pengampunan. Without forgiveness. Kita tidak bisa dilepas. We cannot be free. Banyak pribadi, a lot of people, terikat, um, is bondage within in, in within bondage. Hidupnya, his life was in bondage. Sehingga dia tidak bisa terbang. So that he couldn't fly. Seperti burung elang. Just like an eagle. Tuhan mau supaya kita bisa terbang. God wants us to fly like an eagle. Di Yohanes 8 ayat 36. In book of uh, John chapter 8 verse 36. Dikatakan apabila anak itu memerdekakan kamu, it says that when the sun sets you free, kamu pun benar-benar merdeka. You are free indeed. Saya ambil dari uh, oh, Sandri yang taruh ya. I took ayat itu. Uh, Sandri. Yeah. Kalau anak itu memerdekakan kamu, if the sun sets you free, kamu pun benar-benar merdeka. You are free indeed. Amen. John 8:36. Tuhan sanggup membebaskan kita. God has the power to free us. Yesaya 55 berkata, uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 55, baiklah orang fasik meninggalkan jalannya, let the unrighteous live their ways of unrighteousness. Orang jahat meninggalkan rancangannya, and unrighteousness live their plan. Baiklah ia kembali kepada Tuhan, and came back to the Lord. Maka dia akan mengasihinya. And God will forgive. Kalau kita kembali kepada Tuhan, Tuhan akan mengasihi kita. God will love us back if we come back to Him. Sebab Ia memberi pengampunan because He gives forgiveness un, uh, unlimitless. Puji Tuhan. Praise the Lord. Yang ketiga, the third thing, the third key that we need to uh, setelah kita diampuni dosa kita, after we are forgiven, kita harus mengampuni orang banyak. We must forgive. Other people who are this is not easy to do. Pengampunan yang Tuhan berikan, forgiveness that God has given us, akan memampukan kita untuk mengampuni orang lain. It will enable us to forgive other people too. Ada seorang pelukis terkenal bernama Leonardo da Vinci. The very famous artist Leonardo da Vinci. Sudah tahu ya? Everyone knows him. Suatu hari dia melukis suatu lukisan terkenal. One day he uh, he draw a very famous art. Yaitu lukisan perjamuan. He was he, he drew the uh, the Last Supper. Sudah tahu ya lukisan itu ya? Everyone knows he painted the Last Supper. Nah, pada waktu dia mau melukis, when he was started to paint, dia sempat bertengkar. He actually uh, quarrel with other teman with his, one of his friends. Dia marah sekali sama temannya. So he was truly ang angry with his friend. Dia benci temannya. So he hated his friend very much. Saya enggak tahu saya pernah ceritakan ini enggak sama saya. I don't know if I've, I've given you this illustration or not. Akhirnya dia taruh muka temannya itu. So he he drew his the face of his friend. Di wajahnya siapa kira-kira? Where? Where did he put ah. the face? So he put in Judas. Muka Judas dikasih mak, mukanya temannya. So Judas he drew. Saking bencinya dia. Because he hated his friend so much. Dia bilang biar kapok. So that that he drew his uh, friend's face as a Judas. Sampai berabad-abad orang akan tahu wajahnya so dia. In over centuries, over people will remember his face. Tapi ada sesuatu yang aneh saudara. But there's something. Um, Interesting happened. Setelah dia lukis wajahnya Judas, after he drew the Judas face, dia mau lukis wajahnya Yesus. He tried to paint the Jesus face. Dan dia enggak bisa lukis wajahnya Yesus. Then he couldn't paint the Jesus face. Ada kesulitan. He got difficult. Berkali-kali dia coba, he setiap tried, hari mau coba lukis enggak bisa. He tried every day but he couldn't. Lama dia enggak ngerti kenapa. First thing he could he couldn't understand why. Akhirnya lama-lama dia sadar. Then he sudden Finally, he understood. Karena ada wajahnya Judas. Because there was a face of Judas. Dia tidak bisa melukis wajahnya Yesus. That's why he couldn't, um, he couldn't draw the uh, Jesus' face. Kalau ada kebencian dalam hati kita. If you have bitten, if you have hated, kita tidak bisa melukis wajah Yesus. In your heart, you couldn't paint Jesus' face. 
Akhirnya dia memutuskan dihapus wajahnya. So he decided to erase Judas. Baru dia bisa melukis wajahnya Yesus. That he can start drawing Jesus. Dan kita bisa menikmati lukisannya yang hari ini. can enjoy his painting now. Matius 6 berkata, Matthew chapter 6. Ampunilah kami, forgive us atas kesalahan kami, all our sins. Seperti kami juga mengampuni as we forgive those orang yang bersalah pada kami. Who trespass against us. Sayang ya sebetulnya stop mestinya ya. This actually this verse actually should stop. Ampunilah kami atas kesalahan kami. Just say that God I mean uh, forgive us for all of our sins. Titik mestinya. Period. Selesai. So Bosan tambah-tambahnya berikutnya. If there's no other, no other, the prayer stops there, then it's easy. Sayangnya enggak stop sudah. But the prayer not stop only. Seperti there. kami juga mengampuni. But prayer says that saya, as saya we sendiri juga enggak gampang mengampuni orang. Those that trespass against us. I have to admit, I also sometimes saya juga manusia. To saya forgive mengampuni. other people. Tapi I, I am also human. Ayat ini ayat firman Tuhan. But this is the word of God. Lukas 23 berkata, Luke uh, 23 pada waktu Yesus When Jesus was hanging on the cross, dia berkata, "Ya bapa." He said, "Father, ampunilah mereka. Forgive the, forgive them." So mereka tidak tahu. For they don't know apa yang mereka perbuat. What they are doing. What they have done. Pertanyaan buat kita adalah, the question to each one of us. Kalau kita digantung di kayu salib, if we were on the cross, kira-kira perkataan apa yang keluar dari mulut kita? What would we say? Think about it. Think about it. Tujuan daripada firman ini, the per the 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 goal of these verses tentang pengampun ini is for this to forgive adalah bagian dari is a part. Kekekalan Tuhan is a part of the eternal plan of God. Dari awal Alkitab sampai akhir Alkitab. From the beginning of the Bible until the end, is the redemption purpose of Christ. Is the redemption, eternal redemption purpose of Christ. Artinya Tuhan mau kita ini ikut di dalam rencana itu. So it's mean that God wants us to go together with this eternal. Jangan sampai tertinggal. Don't don't be left out. Jangan sampai engkau meninggalkan pertandingan itu. Don't let, don't leave the race. Tapi kau harus ikut lari sama-sama. But you have to run together. Memenuhi apa yang menjadi tujuan Kristus. And fulfill what Christ has called you. Yaitu membawa kita semua kembali kepada Dia. Therefore, bring everyone back to Him. Dan memulihkan karakter kita. And to restore our character. Supaya karakter kita menjadi sama seperti Dia. So that our character can be like Him. Karena iblis mau menghancurkan karakter. Because the devil want to destroy our. Iblis mau menghancurkan hidup kita. The devil want to destroy our life. Tapi kita mau belajar, but we want to learn, untuk mengikuti, to follow, apa yang Tuhan inginkan, what God wants, sehingga kita memenuhi rencana Kristus, so that we will fulfill the plan of Christ. Dan yang terakhir, and the last one, untuk keluar dari kaki kepahitan, is to get out of the roots of bitterness. Setelah kita merendahkan hati, after we humble, setelah kita minta pengampunan, after we ask for forgiveness, setelah kita mengampuni, after we forgive other people, jangan sampai kita menjauhkan diri dari kasih karunia. We have to put ourselves under the grace of. Ini yang membuat orang tidak dapat bertahan. This is that make people cannot stand, cannot stand. Strong. Tidak ada seorang pun yang dapat bertahan. There is no one that can stand strong. Di luar kasih karunia Allah. Outside the grace of God. Kembali dari Ibrani dua belas lima belas. Come back to the Hebrew chapter twelve verse fifteen. Jagalah supaya jangan ada seorang pun. It says that stand stand strong and that no one that menjauhkan diri dari kasih karunia Allah. Shy away from the grace of God. Agar jangan tumbuh, so that there is no growing. Agar yang baik, the root of bitterness yang menimbulkan kerusuhan that will cause problems. Perhatikan, menimbulkan kerusuhan that it will cause problems dan yang mencemarkan banyak orang and also defile many. Roma pasal tiga, Roman chapter three, ratapan pasal tiga. Sorry, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three. 
Berkata Tuhan adalah baik bagi orang. It says that God is good. Bagi orang yang berharap pada those that put his their hope in bagi God. jiwa yang mencari Dia. For those souls that were looking for Him. Adalah baik menanti dengan diam. It is good to wait for the Lord. Pertolongan Tuhan. To wait for the help of God. God will help. You. God will help you. Tuhan akan menolong kita. God will help you. Kalau kita menantikan Dia, if we wait upon the Lord, Dia akan menolong kita. God will help us. Tapi kalau kita bertindak, but if we take action, kita keluar daripada. We will shy away from the grace of God. Kedap Tuhan. Yohanes berkata, the book of John say, Firman itu telah menjadi manusia. The word has become human. They become flesh. Dan diam di antara kita. And dwell among us. Kita melihat kemuliaan. And we saw His glory. Yaitu kemuliaan yang diberikan kepada so The glory that was given to Him. Sebagai anak Tuhan Bapa. As the only Son of God. Penuh kasih karunia. Full of grace and mercy. Dan kebenaran. And righteousness. Apakah anda mempunyai kasih karunia? Do you have the grace within you? Apakah anda tinggal dalam kasih karunia? Do you live in grace? Kasih karunia tidak lain adalah Yesus Kristus. Grace is nothing but Jesus Christ. Yang telah memenuhi segala rencana Allah. That have fulfilled all the all the plan of God. Membayar dosa kita. That has paid our sin. Membayar kepahitan kita. Has paid our bitterness. Kelemahan kita. Our weaknesses. Sakit penyakit kita. All our diseases. Supaya kita boleh. Mengalami kemenangan, so that we may claim the victory di dalam dia. In Him. Pada saat kita mengambil pujaan kudus, when we partake in the communion today, holy communion, terima kasih kami. Receive the grace, Yesus Kristus, Jesus Christ, dalam hati, in your heart, sehingga Dia akan membebaskan kita. So He will redeem you dari semua bebat, from all the burden. Marilah kita menanggalkan semua beban. Let us put away all the burden dan dosa and all sin yang begitu merintangi kita that has hindered us dan berlomba dengan and run in the race dengan perlombaan yang diwajib with the race that has been set for us bagi kita bagi kita for us. Mari kita nyanyikan Amazing Love. Let us sing. Mari kita bagi sendiri. Song Amazing Love. Let us stand up.
As we sing this song, let us prepare our hearts to partake in the Holy Communion. Who did not sin? Orang yang tidak pernah berdosa. He has died for us. Dia sudah mati buat kita. There's no such a greater love. Tidak ada kasih yang lebih besar. That he gave his own life for the sake for others. Bahwa dia memberikan hidupnya untuk orang lain. Today we celebrate. Hari ini kita merayakan. That's amazing love. Kasih yang luar biasa ini. That amazing love. Dan kasih ini, it can heal you. Itu bisa menyembuhkan saudara. It can restore you. Itu bisa memulihkan saudara. It can bless you. Itu bisa memberkati saudara. It can protect you. Itu bisa melindungi saudara. Do we lift up? Mari kita angkat. The amazing love will lift up your burden. Kasih karunia Allah ini akan mengangkat beban-beban saudara. Redeem your sin. Membebaskan saudara dari dosa. Jesus, let it, let's eat this bread. Mari kita menyambut tubuh Kristus to welcome His mercy dan menerima kasih karunia di dalam. There's nothing compared to your love. Tidak ada yang dapat dibandingkan doa dan kasih. Help us. Tolong kami, Bapa. Forgive our sins. Ampuni dosa-dosa kami, Tuhan. 
We are so weak. Kami begitu lemah. We don't have any strength. Kami tidak memiliki kekuatan. Without your love, tanpa kasih, we fight you. Kami mengundang engkau to be part of our lives. Jadi bagian daripada hidup kami. When we drink from this cup, Lord, kami meminum dari cawan ini ya Tuhan. We want to receive your forgiveness. Kami mau menerima pengampunan daripada for all the sins, semua dosa in the past yang masa lalu. We are forgiven. Kami diampuni. Yes. We are free. Kami bebas. Your blood has set us free, Lord. Karena darahmu sudah membebaskan kami, Tuhan. Yes. From all the curse. Dari semua kutuk-kutuk. From all the bitterness. Dari semua kepahitan. From all the hatred. Semua kebencian. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Tuhan, saya berdoa di dalam nama Yesus. Oh, lift up all bitterness. Angkat semua kepahitan, Tuhan. In the name of Jesus. Di dalam nama Tuhan, Yesus. Cleanse us. Bersihkan kami, Tuhan. Fill us. Penuhi kami with your grace, dengan kasih karuniamu. With your love, dengan kasihmu. We are no longer bound. Kami tidak lagi dalam ikatan of the spirit of bitterness dari roh kepahitan. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Kami berterima kasih tuh. We receive. Kami menerima ini in the name of Jesus. Di dalam nama Tuhan Yesus Kristus. Let's drink from this cup. Mari kita menyambut darah Kristus. And run toward the future. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your name will be glorified. Your name will be magnified. Your name will be worshipped. Throughout the earth. Because of your work. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you.